ridiculously delicious short rib ragu on Papardel in less than an hour. John Walter writes, Dear Sam, huge fans of the show. My wife Vanessa and I love to watch and make your things. Would love to see you make short rib ragu on some kind of pasta. Okay, I made that up actually. This is just my recipe for today. But John Walter is a person, as is Vanessa, and they suggested this to Max, who shall never be seen again apparently. His hair, honestly, since the pandemic, is down to like here. <laughs> if you ever see him, Consider yourself uh, lucky because not many people do. Right, Chance? Right. Right. All right, but this is really good. This is really good, really delicious, huge, big flavors, and it happens simply and really in one pot, apart from the pasta part, but whatever. So we're going to start uh, with the short ribs, get them going, everything goes in, turn it on for an hour, and then psh, done. Boom, beef short ribs, about uh, three-ish pounds with bone as evidenced by the noise that you can make when you hit them. So a little bit of fat's okay, but let's just have a little look, shall we? Like, um, take a little bit of this off. I don't need to take too much. Like some fat, you know, what do we say, boys? Fat's Better flavor. flavor. <laughs> it's like a third grade class. <laughs> what do we say, everybody? Fat means flavor. We say fat means flavor, so a little bit, right? Like, you know. Never cut towards your hands, kids. That's a mistake that I just remembered. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Work with me here. That's fine. And then we do this. Now we're going to uh, give them a little shot of oil. Of course, avocado oil, like this. Rub it in. And then we season nicely with kosher salt and pepper. Flip them over and do the other side. Yes, it's the back or the whatever, the bone part, and that's okay. Just a little seasoning here is never gonna hurt, right? Now these guys now are going to get uh, browned in our pressure cooker, and that looks like this. So this is a, a pressure cooker, like an Instapot, except it doesn't do as many things as an Instapot does, and that's okay, but what we're gonna start with is taking our big short ribs and getting them browned. I'm on the saute setting, and we're gonna have to do this in two groups because they're all not gonna fit. So you put them in, let them get some color on them. That builds flavor. Take them out, do the other ones, and then we carry on from there. Is that on? This? Yeah. Can you not hear it? Here, look. No, I guess not. No, I didn't because you were over there. Oh, I need to be on browning. Oh, so that's why it wasn't doing anything. And while a pressure cooker doesn't have as many functions as an Instapot, there's still a browning setting, and that's what we're going to use right now to get uh, some color, which translates into flavor on our short ribs. So let's not forget about their sides. So we'll turn them up. Nice. Flavor. That's what you're going for, folks. Don't miss this step. And when they're gorgeous like this, all the way around, take them out. Put the last of them in and do the same thing. And when these guys are pretty all the way around, out they come and we move on to the vegetables. And that means a small onion, cut up, a couple of carrots, and we mix and we let this soften in the leftover fat from the short ribs for three, four minutes. Next in, a couple fat cloves of garlic. Wow, I'm always impressed with how much garlic comes out. You know this drill. It goes in until it becomes super fragrant, about 45 seconds. Next in, a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. It looks like this. And when you throw tomato paste into a hot pot like this, it just amplifies the flavor, and that's really what we're looking for. So mix it well. Oh, you can smell it. And after a couple minutes, a couple tablespoons of flour. This is just gonna help richen up everything. Thicken it a bit. This gets about, oh my God, I just saw a fly. No. Yes. This gets a couple minutes. Next in, about a half a tablespoon of smoked paprika, like that, quick stir. 
and you'll start smelling that right away. We're almost there, folks. We add our liquids next. First up, a cup of beef broth. Beautiful. Followed by a cup of Cabernet. Beautiful big ass red wine. We give that a lovely stir. We're gonna give this three, four minutes so it starts to come together a little bit. Still on the browning cycle. It might do a little bit of a simmer thing. Okay, we're almost there. Last thing before the short ribs goes in, two tablespoons of soy sauce. Look, I know I love soy sauce and I use it because of what it does to everything else. The umami factor, the raising the deliciousness factor. So that's in, now we put in our short ribs, like this. Hello, buddy. And no, there won't necessarily be room for everybody to fit perfectly, but that's okay. I just like to give them a little turn in here, get everybody set. I'm gonna add some thyme sprigs, like that. Get my lid and put it on. Lock it into place, change it from browning to high pressure, set your timer for 45 minutes, and now there's nothing to do. You've got 45 minutes until it starts to depressurize, and that will take about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes. Let it happen manually. When I've rushed it, it's been a mistake, and it's not been the way I wanted it to, so that was convoluted. When 45 minutes is up, it changes from high pressure to, I don't know what it's called, Slow warm. Release. At the end of 45 minutes, it will start to release the pressure by itself. That's called uh, naturally or something. Depressurization. No, depressure. Here's the deal. You can depressurize it yourself or you can let it happen naturally. Let it happen naturally. But make sure that this little valve on the top is set to pressure and not pressure release. Because it'll never come to pressure if it's on pressure release. It's not complicated. It's a little bit complicated. Okay, it's, I'm making it complicated. I don't know why. Put your mic next to the thing. I want to hear that sound. I can hear it bubbling. It's building pressure right now. You can see it starting to come out. This isn't locked. When it hits the pressure, that will lock and you won't be able to open it up until first the 45 minutes has passed and then the natural release of the pressure inside the unit itself has passed. The pressure inside the unit. I, I don't know why I'm making this so complicated. Here's what happens. I have nothing to say about the pressure inside the unit being released. <laughs> Here's what happens. It builds pressure. When it gets to maximum pressure, it locks. Are we still talking Stop it. about this? It goes for 45 minutes. At the end of 45 minutes, it starts to depressurize itself on its own. When that's over, you can open it up and eat this stuff. I'll just push that. I almost fucked the whole thing up. In the meantime, go do what you want and write a letter about how mean Max is <laughs> and difficult to be with. Right, Chance? No. You'll yeah. never say it. That's my boy. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Well, it's time. The 45 minutes of uh, high pressure cooking happened. The uh, 12, 15 minutes of depressurizing happened. And now we're at the point we get to take the lid off, see what we've got. And it looks like this. Et voila. Look, I know it's not, it's really not that exciting yet, but I want you to get the sense that it's gonna be. So here's what we start by doing. Here's what we do. We take the ribs out because we're gonna take the meat off them shred it and put it back in. Oh gosh, look at these. Let's get them all out first. There's no meat here. What happened to this one? I know that had meat with it. That means it's so tender, it's absolutely falling off the bone like this. Look at this. That's, that's what's supposed to happen. That's the magic of short ribs, ladies and gentlemen. They really are one of those absolutely deliciously unctuous meats that are the best ever. Oh, hello, little bone with no one attached to you, with nothing attached to you. More meat, more, and look, this, there's no bone here. Here's the bones. I got a couple bones. Just take them out. So here's what you want to do. You just want to take your guy and do this. Just shred him up. Just get them into smaller 
biteable pieces. Oh my gosh. Like this. And I think pieces about that size are great, right? So here, this guy. So this all now is going back into our pot and going to richen up everything. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, it's fantastic. A little more here. So you've got some beautiful bites here. Beautiful bites. So now all of this goes right back into the pot. Like this. Wow, like this. Like this. A little stir. Oh my God. And now I like to take this guy and turn it to simmer. And I'm just going to leave it now. I'll put the lid on. Doesn't have to be on tight. Gonna give that about 10, 15 minutes. Just let it start to thicken up a little bit, get even more delicious. And then we come back, it goes on pasta, and boy, are we gonna be happy. We've simmered, we're ridiculously delicious, and now we're ready. In goes our Papardelle, gorgeous. I love these huge, wide ribbons of pasta. And nothing's gonna make this prettier than what we're about to put on top of it. Oh my goodness. Gorgeous. One more. And perfect. Perfect timing because the gardeners are on their way. And now for this. The luxurious, gorgeous, amazing short rib ragu. Like this. Oh, mamma mia. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna finish this now my favorite way. And it's with two things. One is a little freshly grated Parmesan on top that starts to melt the second that it hits. Mama. And of course, a tiny bit of parsley because I have to. Now somebody tell me that doesn't look amazing. Start to finish an hour. Holy shit, out of way. Away you go, boy, take your pictures. And this is what we've made. Love the Pappardelle, love it. This nonsense, this gorgeous, hugely rich, delicious short rib. That's gonna be one hell of a bite right there. It's a big one, it's a generous bite, but it's what I've settled on. Too big a bite, boys? I think you can handle it. Perfect. Thank you, Chance, it does look perfect. This is absolutely last meal worthy. Oh, I'm not kidding. This is stupid. It's fantastic. If you didn't have a, a pressure cooker or an Instapot, you could do the same thing in a Dutch oven, in a big heavy pot with a lid in your oven at 300 degrees. It would probably take you three hours to get it here. However you get here, just f***ing get here because this rich, delicious, amazingly tender beef is everything. <laughs> These boys haven't had any yet, but they're going to shit them. Sorry. We're talking about food here. They're going to crap themselves when they have this. It is that good. Oh my God. All right. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for watching. And as much as we love the fact that you're here with us watching, we want you to make the food. So change up what you're doing. Don't eat the same thing all the time and try some new stuff like this because this will change your life. Right, boys? Right. right. You don't know that. You haven't had it yet. God, they're just so anxious to be part of everything. See ya. <laughs>